Hi yes. everyone, I'm Nelson. And I'm really bad at chess. That's Hannah. Um, we've been spending some time inside lately and I've been showing Hannah how to play chess. And uh, you know what? I'm pretty good at chess, so I thought I'd up the ante and pull up my Zach's hacks and uh, make a move. So it's actually my turn now, right, Hannah? Oh, my bad. Crushed it. So um, it's actually Hannah, Hannah's turn, and uh, she thought she might join in on the challenge too. Um, Hannah, let's see what you got. I'm going to take this weird looking piece here. How's that? That was all right. I'm getting better. Well, I think are. I'm getting better. Yeah. You know, it's been a long four weeks, but I'm getting there slowly. So we're going to have some more fun and games. Let's go to a Dubious Science with Kate and Jacob. <laughs> hey everyone and welcome to Dubious Science with Kate and, and Jacob. Today we are going to do a fun experiment with you guys. For those of you at Mackenzie, you may be wondering where Georgia is. I just want to assure you we have the next best thing. I am her older sister and I promise to look after this segment today. But Jaken, what experiment are we going to do? Today we get to make walking water rainbows. No way. Get out of town. Yes. I'm very excited. Well, what are some things that we're going to need for this experiment? Uh, today we're going to need five cups. Preferably see-through so you can see what's happening. Ooh. We want food colouring. So we've got the three primary colours, which are yellow, blue and red. There we are. And we are going to want five pieces of paper towel in strips. So you fold it into three pieces. Awesome. Hey, yeah. kids, just remember too, before you have a go at this experiment, make sure that you get your parents' permission and your help because sometimes it can be a little bit dangerous. Safety first. But uh, our first step for our experiment was we needed to fill our five cups with a little bit of water. Not too much. You don't need much, but probably, what would you say, a third, half yeah. a cup? Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put five drops of food colouring into three of our cups. Now, we need to make sure that these are the outside one and the middle. So I'm going to put five red into this one. Jake and you're going to do five blue. And then we'll put yellow into the middle one. Give it a bit of swirl. Alrighty, Jake and over to you. What are we doing next? Okay, so next we have to grab our strips of paper towel and we have to mix, put, put them in one and then like put them in to the next cup. Okay, like so we're making a bit of an arch. It's looking really awesome and if you guys keep the experiment going at home, you should see some incredible things happen. This is caused by capillary action where you would expect the water to be coming down, but it's actually travelling up the paper towel and into the other cup. Okay, so what's going to happen to our clear water, Jacob? It is going to mix the colours of the cups beside it and make the secondary colour in between. Awesome. Hey, if you do this experiment at home, we would love for you to send us in a photo of it to our email, ktv at gatewaybaptist.com.au. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time. G'day everyone at KTV. It's Dan Warlow here and I've got Grace and Bethany with me and I reckon we should sing the Grow song. You ready? Get ready to dance around and sing along. All right, let's do it. Like a garden, and faith is like a seed. And God's the greatest gardener you have ever seen. It might take a little while, but one thing you should know He is pleased when little seeds begin to grow. We gotta go, 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 big in love. We gotta go, go, go. A garden, we gotta pull the weeds and clear out all that rocky soil. The 
stops those growing seeds God's a pruning specialist And one thing you should know All the shoots that lead to fruits He prunes to grow We gotta grow, grow, grow Big in love We gotta grow, grow, grow Strong in faith We gotta grow, grow, grow Standing tall so great to be able to sing along with Dan Warlow. Now, in fact, for you, our KTV viewers, we have an exclusive 25% off discount off his new album. So if you ask your parents' permission, head to his website, danwarlow.com, and enter the promo code KTV25, and you will get 25% off his new album. You should do it. It's a great album. You'll really enjoy it. Um, we are going to jump into a connect in time this morning, and we're going to start by praying for a couple things. So a lot of you guys are going back to school this week, um, so we're going to pray for you. And we're also going to pray um, that God would give us joy, even in the midst of the uncertainty that's still going on. So how about we close our eyes and let's pray. Hey God, thank you so much for the fact that um, you love us and that you're with us always. And thank you for the fact that our routines um, and the things that we used to do all the time are starting to get back to normal. Thank you that we get to go uh, back to school, see our friends, see our teachers again. And so I ask that you would be keeping us all safe this week as we do. I ask that um, this week would be really fun, um, that we would really enjoy going back to school and getting to see the people we haven't seen in ages. Um, and I ask that even as things still look different, but even though um, they still might be um, a little bit out of the ordinary, I ask that you'd still give us joy through all of this, that you'd help us to still feel your love and the joy that you give us um, through this season. Amen. Now, next up, guys, because you are all heading back to school this week, we thought it would be fun if we asked you guys a question. So we would love you to send in a video that's 10 seconds or less and tell us one thing that you love about being back at school. Send it through to ktv at gatewaybaptist.com.au. We would love to hear from you. And then each week going forward, we'll compile some of your answers and highlight them the week after. So make sure you check back on, email through, and then see your video might be highlighted. And it has also been really great to hear from our life group leaders who are still missing you so much. Um, and we also thought it'd be kind of fun to ask them a question as well. So we have decided that we're going to ask them this week, what do you love most about God? We're going to check out some of the answers now. Have a look. I love how amazing God is. And even though he's super mighty, he still chooses to use me in so many different ways. And he can use you in many different ways too. I love the way God reminds us that he's always there. He loves us very much and he's always in control. 
I love that I can talk to God just like I talk to my friends and my family. And I love that God loves me and that he wants to be a part of my life and your life. Alrighty, so we tried chess for you, Nelson, but I think we should try some, you know, card throwing. It seems to be going real well for you. You know, it's more just a flick, a flick, a flick of the wrist. Are you sure? A small flick. I think it works better when you throw it like this. Okay. This is too hard. Let's go to teaching with Jess. Good morning, everyone. I hope you have been having a good week. Today is the last week of our No Other Name series. Over the last few weeks, we have been learning more about the different names of God and how Jesus came to earth to show us exactly what he is like. Question, have you ever tried to spell your name or say your name backwards? It's actually harder than you think. A few years ago, just for fun, me and my siblings decided to find out what our names would sound like if we were to spell them backwards. When you try and say your, say your name backwards, it sounds very different. And at the start of this series, I told you that my full name is Jessica Louise Ellsmore. But if I spell my name backwards, my name becomes Akasej Isil Iromsley. Now, how's that for a nickname? I want to challenge you to learn your name backwards too this week, just for fun. We may stay clear of using this kind of nickname for God though, because his name backwards is Dog. And well, I like dogs, but I don't think it's quite a nickname that works for God. But today we are going to learn one more name that is actually used to describe God so that we can get to know him a bit more. Because the more we get to know what God is like and learn the stories of Jesus' life, the more we can trust him in our own lives. And so our bottom line for today is very easy to remember and very important for us to know. God heals. Now, I reckon you'll be able to remember that one. And the name that we'll be learning today is Yahweh Rapha. Say it with me out loud. Yahweh Rapha. This name, like the other names we've been learning, comes from the Hebrew language, which was the language people spoke in uh, the Old Testament. And in English, Yahweh Rapha means, you guessed it, God heals. And throughout his life, Jesus healed many people who were sick and unwell. People from all over came to him to be healed from all kinds of sicknesses and issues that they were experiencing. And I'm sure many of you can think of some of those stories that you've read or learned about. And we can find all these stories of Jesus healing people in the Gospels which are the four books of the Bible that tells us about Jesus' life on earth. And at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, he tells everyone that he has come to earth to give sight to the blind and to heal the brokenhearted. Healing and restoring people's lives, both physically and in their hearts, is the focus of Jesus' mission back then and even still to this day. Today, we're going to read a story about Jesus healing a man that he meets on the side of the road who had been born blind. And this story is found in John 9, verse 1 to 12. As he went along, Jesus saw a man who had been blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Teacher, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with his saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbours and those who had seen him before asked, isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes open? They asked. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it in my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and then I could see. Where is this man? They asked him. I don't know, he said. Jesus completely healed this man. He had been born blind his whole and was blind his whole life and had never been able to see anything. But when he met Jesus, everything changed. 
Now, there was some confusion from people watching about who this man was and how he was healed. But one thing was for sure. He was blind, but now he could see. And God can still heal us today and he can heal us in many ways. He might heal us miraculously in a moment like the blind man. And he can also heal us in time through other people who can help us like doctors. He can heal us physically when our body is sick or broken. And he can also heal us in our hearts. He can heal us from our sadness and our fear and our anger. We or the people we love might not get better when or how we want. But um, like we've been learning over the last few weeks, we can trust him no matter what because he is in control. And so let's remember that our bottom line for today is God heals. I would love to pray for all of you this morning. Maybe you or someone you love is sick at the moment. And there are certainly a lot of people around our world who are sick today as well. I don't know all of your specific situations, but I'm going to pray and thank God that we can trust him and we can pray that he would heal anyone who is sick. So let's close our eyes and bow our heads to pray together. God, I thank you for this story that we read this morning uh, that reminds us that you have the power to heal us uh, from our sicknesses and the issues that we face. God, we thank you that the same power that Jesus used to heal the blind man in today's story is available for us today. And so God, I pray for any of my friends or their families this morning who are unwell or who have, uh, are facing uh, difficult circumstances and uh, sicknesses in their lives. God, I pray that you would heal them uh, miraculously, God. And I pray that, uh, that you would place the right people around them to help them and to heal them from whatever they are facing. Thank you that we can always trust that you have the power to heal us. And I pray all of these things in your name. Amen. All right, we've decided to have some quiet time now because things were, you know, getting a little bit intense before. So we've resorted to Jenga. Nelson, your turn. Oh, okay. As you can tell, it's a very intense game. Um, it's... No. Oh my gosh. I actually can't find one that's loose. We hope you have a great week at school this week and uh, make sure you say hi to your friends. Maybe take some photos of you playing some quiet games as well. Right. And we'll see you next time on Sex